Hey, this is Presh Talwalker. Avery and Brian have the following conversation. Avery says, I'm thinking of two different one-digit numbers. Can you guess their sum? Brian responds, No. Can you give me a clue? Avery replies, The last digit of their product is the same as your house number. Brian then says, let me work it out. Now I know. The question is what is the sum of the two numbers? I thank Pet for the suggestion, and this problem is adapted from a 2015 Singapore Olympia challenge for primary five students. Pause the video if you'd like to give this problem a try. Keep watching to learn how to solve this problem. Let's enumerate the possible products of two one-digit numbers. We'll create a little multiplication table. Now we're interested in the sum of the two numbers. So we want to evaluate each product and try to figure out the last digit of each product. The lower half of this table is identical to the upper half of this table because multiplication is commutative. 2 times 1 is equal to 1 times 2. So we don't have to consider these possibilities. They'll be considered by the numbers that are above the diagonal. Next, we know we have two different one-digit numbers. So we can eliminate the diagonal. So now let's clean up our table. These are all the possible products that we need to consider. Avery had said, the last digit of their product is the same as your house number. Brian replied, let me work it out. Now I know. So we don't know Brian's house number, but we can work through the possibilities. What if Brian's house number was equal to two? Would he have been able to work out the sum of the two numbers? The answer is no. There are many products that have a last digit equal to two and the two numbers have different sums. So Brian's house number could not have been equal to two. He wouldn't have been able to figure it out. What if his house number was equal to three? Well, in one case, we have one times three is equal to three, but in another case, we have seven times nine is equal to 63. So once again, if Brian's house number was equal to three, he wouldn't have been able to figure out the sum of the two numbers. We can then eliminate four because once again, we have many possibilities. So it couldn't have been four. It also couldn't have been five. There are many possibilities. Brian wouldn't have been able to figure out the answer. Same thing goes for six. And we'll just continue to eliminate the different possibilities. Seven can also be eliminated. What about eight? Well, again, we have many possibilities, so it could not have been equal to eight. Now what about zero? What if the last digit was equal to zero? That was Brian's house number. Well, we have many possibilities, so we can again eliminate this option. Now what if Brian's house number was equal to nine? Well, there's only one case, so it could have been equal to nine. What if his house number was equal to one? Again, we only have one possibility, so he would have been able to figure out the sum of the two numbers. So we don't know if Brian's house number was equal to nine or it was equal to one. So how can we work out the sum? The interesting thing is that these two cases have exactly the same sum. One plus nine is equal to 10 and three plus seven is equal to 10. So while we don't know whether Brian's house number was equal to nine or one, we can definitively say that the sum of the two numbers is equal to 10. What an incredible puzzle. Thanks for making us one of the best communities on YouTube. See you next episode of Mind Your Decisions, where we solve the world's problems one video at a time.